Welcome to the Simufot Welding Tutorial. Simufot Welding is a welding simulation software capable of simulating many types of processes including arc welding, laser and electron beam welding, and resistance spot welding. In this video we show how to accurately simulate an arc welding process. Launch Simufot Welding and create a new project. Give the new project the name GMAW Tutorial. It is important to know where the files will be stored, then set the path accordingly. In this window we will configure the simulation type and needed components. Make sure you have Arc Welding type selected. You can also write some useful information inside the box on the right side. Leave the gravity box unchecked. Change the number of components to 2. 1 bearing. 2 clamps. And 1 robot. A blank project is just created. Here we have the explorer, where the process is built. The catalog where all objects are stored, the visualization area, the properties window, and the status and control bar. Let's start with importing the components. Right click on geometries, select import. Locate the plate and tube files for this tutorial. Select both and click open. A new dialog will open. Here you have to specify what at length unit Simufot welding should use for the meshes. As the meshes were exported in millimeters, choose millimeters, and mark the use for all geometries box. Now we have both components available on the catalog. Drag and drop each geometry in one component. The next step is to assign the material. Simufot Welding comes with Simufot Material, which is a comprehensive library of material data. Right click on Materials and select Library. Select STKM13A to use on the components and G2C1 as filler material. Drag and drop STKM13A on each component and G2C1 on the robot. These material data will provide the mechanical and thermal properties to the models. You can change the view of the model by selecting some predefined configurations. To the next step we will use the bottom view. Use the mouse wheel to zoom in and zoom out the model on the visualization area. Within the Simufot welding environment the user can create the boundary conditions. To generate geometries for that, right click on bearing and select generate geometry. There are two primary types of geometry the user can create. Cylinders. Or cuboids. For the bearing, we will use a cuboid. Click on Select Location. Click and drag to locate the cuboid on the green surface. Go to the Details tab. Change Height to 5 mm, Width to 150 and Depth to 150. Right mouse click and drag to rotate view. Use the mouse wheel to zoom in and zoom out. Let's generate the geometry for the clamps. Right click on clamping and select generate geometry. Change to top view and zoom in in the tube. Change geometry type to cylinder. Click on select location then click and drag to create the cylinder. Go to the details tab and change both radius and height to 5 mm.
Repeat the same procedure for clamping two but selecting another place to position the cylinder. Save the project. You can reposition any geometry by using the built-in tool. Right-click on the desired geometry and select Object Manipulation. There are two options. Translate. And Rotate. All these movements can be done by dragging the axis directly on the screen, or moving by specified steps. Remember that Simufoc welding calculates contact automatically. So, the position of each body will impact the simulation in some manner. Avoid causing penetration between bodies as this can cause non-convergence of the model. Let's pick some nodes to create the welding path. For that, Simufoc welding provides an object called Node Set. With this, you can pick the nodes directly on the screen to form the path. Adjust the windows and screen to better visualize where to pick the points. For this tutorial, please select 20 nodes on the purple tube. To do that, hold the control button and use the left mouse button. These nodes will serve as welding path, so it is important to care about the picking sequence. This will determine the welding direction. When you select a node, all information about location comes with it. Click Apply Changes to Node Set. Then close the Node Set tab. Rename the Node Set to Weld 1. Drag the Weld 1 node set over trajectories. When prompted, select Weld Line, as this is process will be an arc welding example. Drag the trajectory and drop it over robot. This will assign the Weld 1 trajectory to this robot. Rotate the model to see the just created and assigned trajectory. If you have a closer look. Notice that the trajectory shows three components. The black arrow indicates the torch alignment, the red dots are the points of the trajectory, and the yellow arrows between the red dots indicate the welding direction. Simufoc Welding has a dedicated object to input the process conditions. This object is the welding parameter. Right click on welding parameter and select new heat source parameter. A new window will open, in this first tab the user can enter many important information about the welding process. Here it is also possible to import microstructure image and a complete description of the how the real process is executed. Here in the second tab is where the actual parameters will be entered. The first parameter is welding velocity. This is the speed by which the robot or welder is moving the torch. For this tutorial. Input the value 30 cm per minute. You can change the unit on the fly and observe the direct conversion of the values. This is especially useful if you are dealing with a mixed unit system. Simufoc Welding handles unit conversion automatically, you do not need to worry about unit consistency any longer. The next step is to choose the calculation method. Simufoc Welding provides three methods. Transient indirect power, where the user provides current, voltage and efficiency. Transient direct power, where the user provides the power input in watts directly and efficiency. And thermal cycle, here a temperature table activates the weld bead instead of moving the heat source. We will use the transient indirect method for this tutorial. 
Enter 100 amps for current. 17 volts for voltage. And 0.9 for efficiency. On the third tab is where the heat source geometry values are inputted. Please refer to the heat source info sheet to get more information. Enter 1.96 to front length. 7.20 to rear length. 2.77 to width. And 3.77 to depth. The heat source type for arc welding is the conventional double ellipsoid model. Semifoc welding provides two types of heat source geometry, one for electric arcade processes and another for focused beam processes. Rename the weld parameter to MIG. Then drag and drop it over the trajectory already assigned to the robot. Double-click on the robot to configure the welding execution. In this new window there are three divisions. One configures the start time of the execution. The second area is to input time data related to each trajectory. In the third area it is possible to visualize and change the welding parameters. In the second tab is where the trajectory alignment is modified. For this tutorial. It is enough to mark the orientation and projection on surface checkbox. Hit apply to commit the changes. You will notice that the black arrow on the trajectory is showing now the correct torch alignment of 45 degrees. Rotate around the components to make sure all points are correctly aligned. Now in the third tab is where we generate the weld bead geometry. Semifoc welding can create the weld bead according to the given dimensions, or the user can import a pre-meshed geometry as a weld bead. For this tutorial, enter minus 0.3 for the B parameter, 2.5 for Z1 and 2.5 for Z2. Hit apply and the weld bead will be created. You can observe it directly on the visualization area. Go back to the first tab and enter 0.2 for pause at start, representing pre-gas. 0.1 for lead time, representing the arc start. 0.1 for follow-up time, representing the arc closing. And 0.2 for pause at end, representing post-gas. Hit apply and Simufoc welding will calculate a new total time for the simulation. Click yes. Go over the three tabs again just to make sure you have configured everything. Then hit OK. Now our process is completely defined. Let's configure some parameters on the solver such as simulation time. Double click on solver to bring up the configuration window. In the first tab you can configure the analysis mode, solver type and suppress some result options. In the third tab is where parallelization is configured. Here you have the option to use two approaches, domain decomposition and or symmetric multiprocessing. This feature needs a special license. Please contact your local support team in order to get more information. For this tutorial, please activate the parallelization checkbox and define three domains. In the third tab is where the time settings are configured. Please set the end time to 30 seconds. Observe that there are many other options, some of these options have a direct impact on the model's results. Please refer to the time control info sheet to have a more detailed explanation. Fourth tab is where auto refinement of the meshes is activated, we will not use this approach for this tutorial. On the fifth tab the user can input points to be tracked. Charts of post variables will be generated for this points. The sixth tab is where the friction coefficient is defined. You have the option to define a global friction or individual coefficients for pairs of bodies. 
Now our simulation model is entirely configured. Click on the blue arrows to update the status of the model and the green arrow on the left will become green. This indicates that our model is ready to be calculated. If you want, you can rename the process for something more familiar. Save the project. Click on the green arrow to start the calculation. Click Save and Simufa 12D will start the initialization phase. All initial contact is calculated and the input file to the solver is generated. After a few seconds, the initial results will become available. This is one of the greatest advantages of using Simufoc welding. You do not need to wait for the simulation to finish to start looking at the results. Simufoc welding users can start post-processing their models as soon as the first time step is calculated. This capability can save a great amount of time, especially when evaluating different scenarios of the same process. You can analyze all available post-processing variables. They are grouped to better locate the correlated variables. As soon as a new time step result is available, the arrows on the top right side become blue. Click on that icon and the time bar will be updated. New results are ready to be analyzed. This completes our ARC welding tutorial. If you have any questions, please contact your local reseller or support team. We will be glad to help you solve your most challenging welding simulation.